How's it going? This is Joe Intel. And right now, let's take a look at 10 speakers that are under $200. So this is in the budget category, and I've gotten a chance to review a bunch of speakers in the past four or five years, and I really started off here in the budget category. So this is, this is where I started. I mean, I know a lot of folks will see bookshelf speakers and they'll look, and people are saying, oh, great value, $500. You may not want to spend five hundred dollars yet. You, you, you know, you're just getting into this. You're coming from some computer speakers, something like that, or maybe you've never actually had speakers before. And so, you know, hundred, two hundred dollars, even that is a stretch for some folks. I totally get it. And so, let's take a look and see what you can get for that price range. And so, if you're wondering whether you can get a speaker that's better than, let's say, a five hundred dollar speaker. I I would say probably not because I think $500 is about the sweet spot where above that you start seeing diminishing returns. So 200, just know you're gonna make some sacrifices, but it doesn't mean that you can't get excellent, very good sound, enjoyable sound. You definitely can. Just know that if you were to step up, it's gonna be better. So something to look forward to. So here we're taking a look at the speaker leaderboard. And this is where I rank various speakers that I've reviewed previously. And so we have here the under $200 category. And a lot of these are gonna also be in the under $100 category. So the very first one, unfortunately, is no longer available. And it is these Pioneer SP FS52s. These were floor standing speakers and they would go on sale often. Look at the price that I got it for here. I bought them a few years ago and it was $129 for a pair on B&H Photo. Unfortunately, you can't get those anymore, so sorry for the tease. I just wanted to let you know that some of these deals that I'm gonna show you right now, they may not always be available. Just because of this low price point, it's hard to it's hard to keep stuff in stock because they're working off a very low margin, so just know that. We'll take a look at something that you can actually buy, and it's still designed by the same person who designed these previous speakers, and it is these ELAC Debut 2.0 B5.2s. Right now, these are on sale for $199. These were designed by Andrew Jones. And I haven't had an actual review, official review of these speakers because I bought them for a friend. And so, yeah, I wanted to get them to him right away. But I did get to listen to them. I did measure them. And so, yeah, these are very good speakers. They're two-way speakers. And the cool thing about them is they actually measure pretty well and they have good bass. So I'm gonna show you some quick measurements. We're not gonna go too deep into them, but I want you to know what they're telling you when you see them. So this is an in-room measurement, meaning it's something that I did in my room. It's not a perfect measurement, but it kind of gives you an idea of how the speaker sounds. The first thing we're gonna look at is these dark lines is the plus or minus three decibel point. And a speaker that can stay within that range means that it's relatively accurate. And you'll see that at a certain point, it begins to not be in that range. So this area here is the bass, mid range, and then treble frequencies over here. I was measuring here at 65.8 Hertz is where they claim the minus three dB point. That's usually how the, uh, companies should rate their speaker. The minus six dB point is 53.7 and minus 10 dB point is about the lowest bass that you're gonna hear in the room and this was at 42 hertz. So yeah, for a five and a quarter inch speaker, that's pretty good. And also notice that the frequencies response is relatively flat. Everything is staying here within the plus or minus three dB point. And so that was Andrew Jones' specialty, keeping the cost down while still making a very good speaker. Next up on the list is another tease. This one is no longer available. It's the bookshelf version of the SPBS 22 LRs. So I'm not counting this at all. I just wanna show you what was available and it'll lead to the next one. Yeah, this was a great speaker from Pioneer. Uh, you could also get these for very cheap, under 100 bucks for the pair a lot of times. I wouldn't buy it right now. This guy's trying to sell it for 299 and yeah, no, don't do that. These were good. They were a little bit large and they had a rounded back. I mean, it was excellent value for the money. But because these aren't available, I will show you these. These are the ELAC 4-inch BS41s. Again, these were also designed by Andrew Jones. You're starting to see a pattern here low cost, good performance. Yeah, that's where he was at. And so these are the BS41s. And so I did review these recently and these are a good replacement. I think they're a solid replacement for that Pioneer bookshelf speaker that's no longer available, unfortunately. So let's take a look at that. So here is the Pioneer, which 
we can no longer get. And here is the BS41. So I've included the port in these so you can see what that looks like. But you can see, yeah, it's, it's, it's there. You can tell it's designed by the same person. And so it's still staying within the plus or minus 3 dB point. So the lower the frequency for the bass, the deeper that you'll be able to hear. 20 Hertz is the limit of human hearing. That's subwoofer territory, but we can't expect that for these smaller speakers. So uh, minus 3 dB point, I was measuring about 47 Hertz, minus 6 dB around 42, and minus 10 dB, 36 Hertz. Again, I wanna reiterate the minus 10 dB point is not earth shaking bass. It's just the bass that you can possibly hear. So. The lower the better. So right now it's 165, not sure why, it should be around $149, but that fluctuates. Next up on this list is actually the Mica RB42, and these are interesting because, yeah, take a look at that surround. So yeah, the Mica RB42 is 149 bucks. There's a $20 coupon right now. Oh, that brings the price down. Currently, this is Cyber Monday, so we may have some deals here that are just extreme, so just be realistic here. Four inch woofer, very thick surround on there and a one inch soft dome tweeter. This is a very dense speaker. It's small and yeah, binding posts are pretty nice. It's rear ported and it has a real crossover. I've actually displayed these speakers at a high end show where all the speakers were in their hundreds of thousands of dollars and I had no issue. The room was packed, lots of people were impressed and you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go over there and embarrass myself, right? So I already knew that these sounded very good and their specialty is that they have a ton of bass <laughs> in a small speaker. And you can kind of tell by looking at the woofer there. You'll also notice a pattern that what I recommend at this low price point is something with bass. So even if it's not perfectly flat, if it has bass, at least you're gonna get some of that, you know, some, some sort of bass it just makes the speaker more fun rather than a speaker that's more accurate but doesn't have any bass. So we'll take a look right now. And here is the Mica RB42. And here's the port. And you can see it's, you know, it's staying within there above the higher frequencies. And, you know, there's some issues over here where the bass kind of goes up. Uh, let's see here, minus three dB point around 46, minus six at 40 Hertz and minus 10 dB around 33. Very ridiculous for a small speaker like this. Very fun speaker, not the most accurate speaker, but fun and small enough for a desk, for a kitchen, things like that. And I think you'll have fun if you get something like this. I think it looks pretty cool too. Now, one thing to keep in mind is these speakers that I'm showing right now are all passive speakers. So you will need an amplifier and you'll need an RCA cable to plug it in to your source. You may need a 3.5 to RCA and you're gonna need speaker cables. So these are added costs just to be aware of. And so I would say any of these, you could kind of pair up with a small class D amp. I like some of the ones from SMSL. I'll leave a link to some of the ones I've reviewed previously, but you can spend under hundred dollars on an amplifier and get some pretty decent sound in a situation where you're in a smaller room, maybe at a desk, things like that. So next up on the list is actually the Numi BS5. And these are interesting. They're 109 bucks a pair. Wow. Wow, very interesting. So the quality compared to the ones I mentioned previously, maybe a step down, slight though, still has a magnetic cover, right? That's pretty cool. It's just the finish is a little bit, it's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit rough. But you do get a real crossover here. It is using a five inch woofer and a one inch soft dome tweeter, and it is front ported, which looks cool, but I'll show you in a second that could lead to some issues. But for 109 bucks, it's very hard to complain. So here is the Numi BS5, and you can see it is a downward sloping response, meaning that the higher frequencies are a little bit rolled off. Some people would call that a warm sound signature. And so, yeah, it still has some bass. And yeah, overall, it's a pleasing tonality if you don't mind giving up a little bit of clarity. So I did mention these are indoor measurements. I did use psychoacoustic smoothing just to keep things simple, but it's a little bit dangerous to look at only that and not look at some high resolution ones because here, if I use less smoothing, you'll see that there is a dip in the frequency response here. And that is actually caused by the front ports and some sound, some resonances coming through. I'll show you in a bit that you can actually plug those ports and it removes that dip there. So that's interesting to know but you do lose a little bit of bass response. So the minus three dB point is around 61 Hertz, minus six dB around 46 and minus 10 around 35. If you put any of these near a wall, you will get some bass reinforcement and yeah, 
just an increase in bass response. Next up on the list is pretty much the same speaker except powered. So I mentioned that you do have to buy amplifiers for the passive speakers. This one, because it has an amplifier built into the back, it has Bluetooth, it has a coax and optical. So that's kind of handy if you have a TV that doesn't have HDMI. It's a, one of the older TVs, you can use that. You can use an analog RCA input and it has a speaker out to go to the other speaker. So it also comes with a power brick and you even get a remote control, which is handy. In addition to being amplified, it also has DSP correction to kind of fix some of the issues in the previous one. So let's take a look at the measurement of this one. Pretty much everything is exactly the same as the BS5, but take a look at the response. It does have a lifted treble response. So not as laid back, a little bit more of a neutral response. And they've taken the liberty of extending the bass response a little bit more. Here is the bass response is, is about the same as the other one. So even though it doesn't look like it, just trust me, it is the previous one was taken in an apartment where I couldn't play it too loud. So there's is some noise here. This is a lot of times noise floor. So with the same smoothing as before. So remember before we had this dip here, the new one also has that dip, but if you plug the ports on either of them, the dip goes away. So yeah, not bad for 139 bucks. Next up, are these Yamo S803s. Now, these were very popular. A lot of reviewers seem to really like them. I, I get it. They look pretty cool, right? It's a cool design, right? They're slim. They had a few different colors. And yeah, they, they sounded, they had some bass, right? And the only problem for me was that, if you take a look at the measurement here, the S803 is very V-shaped, right? So some people do like that. They, that's what they do in their car. They make it V-shaped EQ. For me, I'd prefer a flatter response, but if you're into that, the bass is boosted, the treble is boosted, and the mid-range is down. So it's both bright and a little bit boomy at the same time. But again, there are trade-offs because the speaker looked pretty cool and it's inexpensive. So minus three dB was around 50 Hertz. Uh, minus six was at 47 and minus 10 dB at 42. Hertz. So these did have some quality control issues. Mine had an issue here in the port where it was kind of peeling off. So I ended up returning them. One of them actually had a wire that was kind of rattling in there. So hopefully they fixed all of that. Again, for 149 bucks, you wish that that wouldn't happen, but I kind of get it. Okay, and then next up, we have the Fluence Signature bookshelf speakers. And the thing about these is they just looked cool. Right, they had this cabinet that was angular here, not typical of a speaker in the budget category. It had this Kevlar woofer, it just had a cool looking design, kind of reminds you of maybe a, a Bowers and Wilkins speaker or something like that. This is also front ported, and I did also notice a dip in the frequency response here, possibly from the ports. At the time, I wasn't sure exactly what it was. I thought it was a polarity issue where the tweeter was flipped. It wasn't, I opened it up, flipped the tweeter, still not good. But anyway, for the price, you get a very good looking speaker. Let's see how it measures. And yeah, there's that big old dip in the crossover range. Some people like a dip there in the crossover range. I personally don't. This is too wide and too deep for me personally. So yeah, I wouldn't necessarily go out and say, yeah, get, this is a recommended speaker. But if you're gonna get it, just know it does have a dip in that region. Other than that though, the speaker was okay. Uh, the minus three dB point was here at 51.8, minus six at 46.9, and minus 10 at 40.5. So you're buying these mainly for the looks. That's, that's, that's mainly it. <laughs> Next up on the list is the Mica 000 speaker. And this was interesting. This is a MTM design, so mid-range tweeter, mid-range. And you could actually place this horizontally or vertically. Yeah, I actually made this video right here on Amazon. Looks good. All right. So, so it's $69 for a single and $109 a pair. These are very small woofers, but again, like the RB42, it has a big surround and it has more bass than you would expect. You can see the rear port there. It has these screw in posts where you can easily mount this. So let's take a look at the measurement of the Mica 000. And you see here, it's not all perfect. You can see the dip here as well. The tweeter 
is a little bit higher than it should be. But overall, what you're getting is an inexpensive speaker with bass that goes down to 51 hertz at minus 3 dB, 47 hertz around, yeah, 47 hertz at minus 6, and 41 hertz at minus 10 dB. You can't play these overly loud, but it's kind of cool that you can use them both horizontally and vertically. So if you wanted to use them as a left, center, and right speaker in a small system, yeah, you can definitely do that. And then next up on the list here are the Monolith THX satellite speakers. These are the ones that I have all around the studio. I'm planning to have about 12 of them, 11, yeah, 11, 12 of them, all around here for an Atmos system. And why do I like these so much? It's because they have a concentric driver. It's a small enclosure. I called it about half the size of a loaf of bread when I reviewed them. But yeah, these come in a larger system, a 5.1, including a sub, but you can buy them separately. Right now they're $199 a pair. And I believe that they have a discount code currently on the website. I have to see, but take a look and see on the homepage if there is a discount code overall. So the important thing to know about concentric is that the off axis response is more similar to the on axis. So if you're directly in front of the speaker and you move to the side, it sounds more similar than some of the other ones. Again, if you move up and down even more so, because with a tweeter and a woofer here, it sounds different when you're above the tweeter and sounds different when you're below the tweeter. And with these, the tweeter's right in the center, so it sounds more consistent overall. And that's important if you're gonna use them as height speakers or if the speakers are near a wall where there is a reflection. So the reflections are gonna sound more similar to the on-axis direct sound compared to other speakers where the on-axis might sound very different from what's reflecting off your ceiling and your sidewalls. Now, the thing is that these are small and they are sealed, which means that they don't have a ton of output. They're very low sensitivity. They don't have a ton of bass, but they do go down to 80 hertz, which is a great crossover point to a subwoofer. They're meant for a smaller room. Let's take a look at the measurement here. And you can see why I like them so much. They are staying within the plus minus three dB point for the most part. And you can see here at minus three dB, it was showing at 73 Hertz, minus six dB at 62 Hertz and minus 10 dB at 55 Hertz. Actually, when I run my room calibration, I run Dirac here in this room, it's actually detecting some of these speakers because they're near a wall. It's detecting them around 41 Hertz. So I wouldn't run them that low. Definitely cross them over at 80 Hertz and above just because you'll be able to play them louder without distortion. The only reason I wouldn't put these higher is just because as a standalone speaker by themselves, it might not be as enjoyable as maybe some of the speakers that aren't as flat, but they have more bass. So bass is important. The bass determines the overall tonality of the speaker. So whatever's happening with the bass also determines how you perceive the mid range and the treble. So if it's lacking bass, it might sound like a bright speaker when it's actually not. So if you can pair these with a subwoofer, automatically it's gonna to go to the top of my recommendation, but that's gonna put us over that $200 price point. And last on my list are these Dayton Audio MK402Xs. The ones that I reviewed were called the MK402BT, but I assume that these are pretty much the same. They look almost exactly the same. The ones that I had were just basically powered versions of these. And so with Bluetooth, take a look at this woofer and take a look at this woofer. They look kind of similar, don't they? Just with the frame is a little bit different. I believe they're using the same woofer on both of these speakers, which is good because I like the amount of bass that that could produce. This Dayton Audio could also produce some pretty good bass. The quality of the construction of the cabinet was not quite as good. It had some cool angles, looked good, but they tuned it way too bright. The tweeter was just, crazy bright. With the Bluetooth version, I was able to tame the treble. I just turned the treble all the way down. And here it is with the treble turned all the way down. And yeah, you can see, I. otherwise it was really up here. The treble was up here, super bright, super bright, not that pleasing. You see this boost here, and this is around two kilohertz. That's where our ears are the most sensitive. So it does have kind of that sound where, yeah, it's not perfect, all right? But what you do get is an inexpensive speaker with some bass. So 74.3 Hertz and minus six is at 53 Hertz and minus 10 at 44 Hertz. Comparing this with the Mica RB42, you can see the RB42 is even more ridiculous when it comes to the port tuning, which is why I recommend it over the Dayton. But the Dayton is also $80 a pair and it's really hard to complain at this price. I don't know that I could design a speaker that's better than this at this price point. So 
what can you say? So I know a lot of people are gonna ask about the Sony SSC5. This is a three-way speaker and it looks pretty cool. I've just never reviewed it. I know a lot of people have and they recommend it because right now it's $123. I've seen it for less than this even. So my buddy Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner has reviewed this. He has a $100,000 Clipple machine. And so these are his measurements of that speaker. And I can, yeah, I can see why people would like this at a very low price point. I mean, the in-room response looks good. His Clipple measures the speaker anechoically. And so he's not getting an in-room response where he's getting some bass rise, but he's showing, it's showing the minus 3 dB point here at 83 Hertz and the minus 10 dB point at 60 Hertz. So if you own one of the speakers where I showed some of the issues, don't let that dissuade you from enjoying your system because I can show you some speakers that are $20,000 and measure worse than these. So believe me, no speaker in the world is perfect. It's just that the more expensive speakers can spend more time on R&D and on quality components to make it more ideal. This hobby is really about enjoying the process of upgrading your system, learning about placement and how to improve the sound and just overall enjoying the process. I'll leave a link to all these down below. If you have any questions about any of these, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Anyway, that's it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. That's it. Take care. Bye-bye.